from in Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing whacker or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. And we are together again on the radio. Here is a column written by a former failed radio talk show host. They tried doing an all-chick talk radio format, and it uh, went down in flames. And this was one of the chicks who was on there, who uh, didn't have two listeners to rub together. So she went back to writing for the Los Angeles Times. Before I read this, I wanted to let you know this is somebody who, uh, who tried doing what I do and failed miserably. And so now uh, she is back to... Uh, Presumably her lower paying job, but the dying art, art form of writing for a newspaper. Robin Abkarian of the Los Angeles Times wrote this column. Uh, the uh, headline on it is Drift Away from Clinton, Frustrates, Frustrates Many Women, You Quasi Wabbit. <laughs> See, and I'm still on the radio. You mean with my pronunciation problem? Here it is. Dateline Dallas from Robin Abkarian. Darlene Ewing is a Democratic activist, longtime feminist, and very frustrated Hillary Rodham Clinton supporter. Like many who have dreamed of seeing a woman in the Oval Office, Ewing doesn't understand why women are drifting in ever greater numbers away from Clinton toward her rival, Barack Obama. I know why. Because women hate other women. It's that simple. Chicks don't like other chicks, and they hate seeing other chicks succeed. I can't say that's true in other countries, because other countries have had women uh, as prime minister or whatever. But uh, as you know, chicks hate chicks. No two ways about it. And so... Of course, when uh, left to choose between a shrill, shrieking, bug-eyed individual who sounds like yesterday's news and an attractive, articulate male who's younger and who many women consider to be hot, you know they're going to choose. They're not going to choose grandma. <laughs> They're just not. They're not. The Robin Adkarian column from the L.A. Times continues. This trend, which has imperiled the candidacy of the woman once considered a shoe-in for her party's nomination, infuriates the frank-talking Texan. That's that Darlene Ewing she talked about. They're running to the rock star, to the momentum, to the excitement, said you. Oh, what's wrong with that? Said Ewing, a family law attorney who chairs the Dallas County Democratic Party. And I am worried that if Hillary doesn't get elected, I am never going to see a woman president in my lifetime. I do think her chances are slipping away, and it pisses me off. This sentiment is being expressed around the country. In testy dinner party conversations, around the water cooler, and in the public forum. As Clinton's shot at the nomination boils down to two contests on Tuesday, that's tomorrow, in the delegate-rich states of Texas and Ohio, where she is running neck and neck with Obama. 
Many women who support the New York senator are angered and saddened by their sister's desertion to the other side. Women who refer to each other as sisters, if they're not black, ugh, I think lesbian. <laughs> Sorry, I do. Says here, old school feminists have lined up against each other. Some chapters of the National Organization for Women are supporting Clinton. Others are for Obama. There have been arguments about which candidate is more pro-choice. For some women, the rise of Obama rips open a persistent wound. An older, more experienced woman is pushed aside for a younger male colleague. Well, guess what? This is not the boss, ladies. You can't blame this on the boss of the office. You can't say that the president of your company or the executive vice president or uh, the boss in your office is a sexist. This is being decided in primary elections. You ladies are the majority. By the way, women are 52% of the population, leaving men 4% behind at 48%. Women can elect anyone they damn well please. And if you consider Hillary Clinton the older, more experienced woman being pushed aside for a younger male colleague, you know who did it? Women. Women did it. Women did it. No two ways about it. Women did it because women hate other women, and women hate seeing other women succeed. I've been telling you for years there won't be a woman president in our lifetime, and I was starting to get a little nervous there. I was really starting to believe that things would change. But as much as I know America has been a racist country and a sexist country for many years, <laughs> one thing I know for sure is that women hate other women so much they will overlook their own racism in this country. They... They, they hate the idea of a woman succeeding so much they would even take a black man. And I'm not saying this. By the way, I'm an Obama supporter. Okay, so don't call me a racist. I'm an Obama supporter. I'm telling you I'm an Obama supporter. All right? I'm telling you that you never thought a black guy would be president. The only way a black guy could be. Well, there's two ways a black person become president in this country. One, if he's a Republican. Okay, two, if a woman is running against him, <laughs> because the one thing the American people hate more than black people is women. <laughs> women hate themselves. Now, again, white people say, I can't believe you're saying America hates black people. How racist of you? Oh, no, no. Black people know where I'm coming from. Okay. I grew up in the South Bronx. I grew up surrounded by black people. I, I, w I was sitting in a soup of black people. That's where I lived. 172nd Street and Sheridan Avenue in the Bronx, New York. Zip code 10457. Uh, it is the zip code with the highest murder rate, the highest rape rate, the highest AIDS rate in America. It's a scary place. That's where I grew up. That's where I grew up. And black people will be the first ones to tell you that a lot of America hates black people. Not every American, not everybody, just a lot of Americans. And this, the deck has been stacked against black people since this country began. You have to understand how much women hate other women, that they vote for a black guy. That says a lot. By the way, I think Barack Obama's the best man for the job. I don't care what color he is. I don't care how much experience he has. How much experience did George W. Bush have before he became the president? Was he a senator? No. Congressman? No. What was he? Governor of Texas. Uh, I see. I find it fascinating. People like my friend Sean Hannity go on the radio and they say, Barack Obama doesn't deserve to be president because he's inexperienced. And then he tells you George W. Bush is the greatest president of our lifetime. And he'll be remembered that way. He'll go down in history that way. Well, how much experience did he have? He wasn't even a U.S. senator before he became president. So if you can have that little experience, Sean, and you can be that good a president, imagine how Barack Obama will be after a few years as a U.S. senator. Right? Absolutely. But I want to make this very clear. I mean, 
Uh, this is not me saying that uh, black people are to be disliked or to be disrespected in any way. This is me saying I understand the racism that exists in this country, and I think black people know what I'm talking about. The only way a black guy can become president is if the only other viable option is a woman. <laughs> then people will say, you know what? I don't feel good about black people, but a woman is president? I'll vote for the black guy. <laughs> That's how bad it is. You know what I'm talking about. Maybe you disagree, and if you do, you'll talk to me here at 1-800-5800-TOM. This Robin Abkarian uh, piece continues says here, one of the most impassioned cri de cure, oh, cri de cure, <laughs> very nice, she knows French, came from feminist poet and novelist Robin Morgan, 67, in an essay that became something of a cyberspace sensation after she posted it last month on the Women's Media Center website, and it was forwarded by many people, including Chelsea Clinton. Morgan decried the casual acceptance of sexism on the campaign trail this season from the two young men who shouted, Iron My Shirt at Clinton, to the Hillary-themed nutcrackers available in airport gift shops. I have to get those. Hillary Clinton nutcracker. How appropriate. <laughs> Unless I was going to put the, uh, the head of an ex-wife on one of those. That might be even more appropriate. Says here, but Morgan reserved her greatest ire for women who declined to support Clinton, quote, while wringing their hands because Hillary isn't as likable as they've been warned they must be. Grow the hell up, she said. She is not running for Ms. Perfect, pure queen icon of the feminist movement. She's running to be president of the United States. Recent polls support the suspicion of many women that theirs is a gender divided. Last week's Los Angeles Times Bloomberg poll found Clinton's solid support from women to be dwindling. Women are now evenly divided between the two Democratic candidates, though Clinton still enjoys a sizable advantage among women 65 and older who prefer her 3 to 1 over Obama. That's a bad place to be. That's like some of the radio stations out there, like uh, KRLA and other ones. Their support comes from the audience 65 and older. <laughs> yes. Says here Gloria Steinem, a Clinton supporter, weighed in with an essay in the New York Times in which she claimed that in public and private spheres alike, women have a tougher time than African-American men. Boo freaking who? Gender, wrote Steinem, is probably the most restricting force in American life, whether the question is who must be in the kitchen or who could be in the White House. Black men were given the vote a half century before women of any race were allowed to mark a ballot and have generally ascended to positions of power before any women. That's because women won't vote for women, Gloria. Women don't even like Gloria Steinem, for God's sake. Except other 70-year-olds like Gloria Steinem. <laughs> what women like Gloria Steinem? How many women under the age of 40 know who Gloria Steinem is or care? Now, Robin Abkarian's story goes on, but you know what I'm talking about. Many women are upset that even women won't vote for Hillary Clinton. And I say it's no surprise here because chicks hate other chicks. And you know it's true. <laughs> Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-TOM, 1-800-5800-866. I was in the shower, and I got out of the shower, and my wife was checking my cell phone. And I swear to God, for like the last week, every day I get home, she's like, what, what number was this? What number was that? Who is that? She's like, who is, who is Kim? I feel like telling her, hey, bitch, Kim's the girl I'm banging behind your back. It's the Tom Likas Show. The town like a show at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Thank you for tuning in. All right, here we are. We started off by talking about a newspaper column by one Robin Abkarian, failed former radio talk show host. She wanted to prove that chicks could do it too. 
And then we found out the answer to that postulate. Look it up. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number here. Let's say hello here to Layla on the Tom Likas hello, show. Tom. Hello. Yes. Hi. How are you doing? Great. Well, I just wanted to say that I was a Clinton fan before Obama came, uh, not because she was a woman, because I thought there was no other you know, qualified candidate. But after Obama came, I saw her get emotional in all the couple of debates. I was like, no, this chick cannot rule a country, and she cannot bring us out of anything for that matter. And she was, like, crying on the debates. She was about to cry. And, you know, and I realized, you know, women cannot rule a country. That's just the, you know, that's truth. And, you know, we can't escape that. And for those women who just want to vote for a woman because she's a woman, well, newsflash, women cannot do it. And they just have to get their facts right. I mean, not only women cannot rule a country, I think that just the emotions are going to get in the way and we're going to screw up in the middle. And you see, if women believe this, how could a woman ever win? Exactly, exactly. I mean, I, I'm, I consider myself a strong woman, but, you know, there are many times where I just not, cannot come close to a man's strength. And, you know, and Obama is just wonderful. He's just a solid candidate. He knows what he's talking about. And, you know, how, what kind of experiences does Clinton have that, you know, he can't take care of or he can't learn? She learned, too, just, you know, in the process as well. Uh, and how exactly did she learn? By boning Bill Clinton? Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> I mean, they talk about all this experience she has. What experience was that? She was the wife of the president? Exactly. Does that count yeah. as experience? I don't think so. Just the fact that she didn't say anything when her husband, um, you know, did all those dirty stuff or whatever that people say he did um, doesn't mean, doesn't make her a great woman, you know. So that, you're voting for Obama. Now, Now you say Obama knows what he's talking about. Do you know what he's talking about? Um, at times I do. I mean, a, a lot of times a lot of things that are discussed um, are not, you know, something that I'm interested in. But um, overall, I just see a profile from him that I don't see from anybody else. What, and, what, what are the uh, positions he has that you're attracted to? Just, uh, well, he's good looking. He's good looking. It's another edition but, of Chicks on Politics. <laughs> Obama is good looking. Yes. He's good looking, but it's just the way he talks. I feel like if, you know, there is a crisis going on, I'm sure he's going to be t able to take care of it. You know, if he doesn't have any experience. Because he's so good looking, people will just fall at their feet and say, We're not going <laughs> to declare war on you. Look at you. <laughs> exactly. You're a hot guy. And he is. Chicks you know? dig you. <laughs> Yeah, he is. He's very good looking, but you know, you know, I mean, a lot of the things that he talks about, I feel like even if he doesn't know what he's doing, the way he talks about it, he can pull through. So even if you don't know what he's talking about, it doesn't matter because he looks good and that's what's important. Exactly. He expressed his opinion in a fine, good manner. <laughs> and you will be voting. You are registered. Yes, I actually voted for him. You voted for him in the primary. Yes, I did. And even if he gets like the nomination, you will vote for him in November. Absolutely. Without Absolutely. knowing any of his positions on anything. Well, I do follow some of the debates, but... Um, no, I well, the fact it. that you watch the debates doesn't mean you absorb any of the content therein. Exactly. <laughs> so you really don't know what he, what he stands for, what his positions are. You just like the way he looks. The only thing that I love about what he says is the fact that he's going to make everything public. I mean, I don't know if that's going to be, you know, possible, but he wants everything that happens in the government and everything that happens behind closed doors to be actually in public knowledge. I don't know if that's going to actually happen, but it's a good idea. So if we're going to attack a country, he should put up a, 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 like a posting on his blog or something? <laughs> yeah, you know, at least we should know what's going on, you know. Yeah. Bombing Afghanistan Tuesday night. Just wanted you all to know. Signed, the president. What's that? No, no, nothing. No big deal. Thank you very much. Appreciate the call. It's Chicks on Politics. <laughs> I didn't know it was going to be Chicks on Politics, but, you know, first call out of the gate. There you go. He's good looking, and that's really what's important. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Amy on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, how are you? Great. So I was just wondering, oh, what... 
what the deal is with this girl that just called up and how she has no idea that there are women in all other countries around the world that run countries. I mean, and she's saying women aren't powerful. And Can you name any of them? Uh, Margaret Thatcher. She's dead. Yeah, yeah, she is dead. But I thought you dead. said they are doing that today. Can you name any? Benazir Bhutto. Uh, no, she was just assassinated. She's not running any countries. Okay, well, they were. And when she was assassinated, she was not running uh, Pakistan either. She had been yeah. living in exile. Do you know that? No, I didn't know that. So you, well, let me understand this. You thought Benazir Bhutto, when she was assassinated, she was the uh, president or the prime minister of Pakistan? There we go. Chicks on politics. You know, I, I have no idea. I don't cherry pick these women for their stupidity. This is what you get. This is what you get. Why can't a woman become president? Doesn't it become self-evident when we do a show like this? Yeah, oh yeah, women are running countries. Margaret Thatcher, dead now for years. And Benazir Bhutto. Don't let, these women are so good at what they do, they don't let being dead stop them. They are in charge. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Shelly on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Great. Good. I hope to raise the bar a little. This is kind of frightening of what the women are doing to us. Well, if you want to know why women can't be president, I hope this is showing you why. Although for the good looking thing, I have to say that worked for Clinton. A lot of ladies voted for now, him. Now, can I tell you something? I'm, you know, I'm not gay or anything, but come on. I didn't see it either, but I know I've heard women say that. Bill Clinton had a Very nose like W.C. Fields. you got to be kidding me. <laughs> I agree, but I've heard that. Anyway, my point is I hope you're wrong about why people would vote for Obama, and it's only because he's running against a female, because that frightening thought means that if he does win and he runs in the general election— that means John McCain is going to be our president. That could very well happen. And that's when I move into Canada, I'm afraid. <laughs> that could very well happen. Now, uh, I don't know for sure because uh, right now the polls are inconclusive. Right. But if what you're saying is the only way a black man can win is against a female, and the only way a female can win, well, she couldn't because the women we wouldn't vote for, we're looking at John McCain. Yeah, well, I've been saying for decades that a woman can't win, and... I was starting to get nervous. It, it was starting to look like things were changing. Because at one point, it looked like Hillary Clinton might win the nomination. But uh, it's pretty obvious she's not going to win the nomination. No. Yep. Uh, Texas and Ohio uh, tomorrow, and uh, I think we pretty much know where that's going. I mean, she may win one, but even if she won both, she's just barely hanging on here. Well, I they put the down payment down in uh, something in Canada now. <laughs> Well, now that the American dollar is worth less than the Canadian dollar, <laughs> you, you, may, you may not be able to afford that. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Tom. Thank you, darling. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. We started off with a column by the Los Angeles Times columnist Robin Abkarian, failed former female talk show host, who is uh, writing about all the women who are upset about the fact that many women are drifting away from Hillary Clinton and towards Barack Obama. And I say, maybe the, your, people your grandmother's age, but not not you, right? Debbie on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Debbie. Hi, what a pleasure it is to talk to you. I listen to Dr. Laura regularly and then write to you, and you guys all have the same message. What is that? To not have sex and get make babies until you're happily married or no, not. No, I at never all. say don't have sex. Well, no, she likes she likes grown ups having sex. Okay. Well, you just said to not have sex. Uh, that's not my opinion. No, and sex and make babies. It's oh, and baby make babies. Part. Yeah. Right. All right, so here's how I voted. I'm a Democrat. I liked McCain eight years ago, and my research has shown I um, did look it up that sixty or seventy percent. Of the time, uh, the presidential election, the winner is the taller person, the taller man, of course, since it's only men. And uh, I voted for Hillary, hoping that she would win because... Because you thought she was case, the tallest man running? Because she's short, and I want McCain to win. 
Oh, I see. See, so you did what the uh, the conservative radio talk show hosts are recommending. Uh, you went and uh, is because you could vote in the Democratic primary without being registered to a party. You went and uh, voted for the uh, the Democrat that you wanted to see lose to McCain. Correct. That's what I did. Right. So right. Uh, thanks for your talk. Of course, by the way, my personal experience, personal experience with John McCain is that the guy is a loon, and I believe he will. he's a powder keg and he will explode. Yes, I did hear you uh, talk about that. Uh, you know, but as far as experience, he's got a lot more than anybody else is going to get. As, as far yes, as, uh, he has experience with Charlie Keating and the Keating Five. Yes, he has lots of experience. He made a mistake. And oh, he, stop. He, he made a mistake. Please. Please. We learned a lot. You know, we learn the most from our big mistakes we make. Sure never, you do. He'll never get caught doing that ever again. Yeah. <laughs> he'll never get caught doing that ever again. I like the low bar you've set for your candidates. <laughs> Tom, what a pleasure it is to speak with you. Uh, you're great. I have my boys listen to you. My 13 and 15-year-olds listen to you all the time. Thank you for that, Debbie. I appreciate the call. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. No, it's Tom. Man, you like the Dopest Cat on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> you, you get a hood pass from me, so anybody will come to the hood. I got your back, huh? I love that. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. Ah, uh, yes, you are right. Margaret Thatcher not dead yet, just her career is dead. Her husband died. But she's certainly not running England, and she hasn't for a very, very long time. So there. For all intents and purposes, she's dead. Let's just put it that way. one 800 800 tom Women are getting all upset. Ooh, that women now are... <laughs> Abandoning the Hillary Clinton bandwagon for Barack Obama. And we've heard some of the chicks call in here and say, why? Obama's good looking. He looks like he knows what he's talking about. They have no idea what he is talking about, but they're sure he knows. Which I think is just great. The little ladies making their decisions. It's decision 08 for the little ladies. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Denise on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Tom, how's it hanging? First time, long time. Hanging right, Denise. Oh, I love it. I love it. Hey, I just wanted to call because I'm, first of all, I am an Obama supporter, a uh, converted Hillary supporter who is one of those Obama supporters, but not for the reasons in the article and, and all that. And I just had to respond to some of these little ladies who are calling this afternoon and talking about how women can't be world leaders. And that's not the reason why I... I'm not voting for Hillary. There's other reasons why I chose Obama, but um, that has nothing to do with a woman not being able to lead. Many countries around the world have women leaders that seem to have a little bit more civilized society. Can you now. name them? Well, France has had a woman. No, no, no you said have. Okay. Um, Brazil. Uh, let's see. Switzerland. Brazil. Chile, when do, no, 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 no. The head of Brazil is a man. No. The head of Brazil is a female, I believe. No. No. And, uh, Merkel, she's the president of Germany. Um, Ireland has a female president. Um, uh, let's see, where else? I know Chile has a female president. So I know there's a number of countries, and there's a number of countries who have had women presidents and prime ministers, not even counting Margaret Thatcher, who, yes, is practically dead. Anyway, so I don't think the issue is a woman can't be a leader. Well, no, the issue is not whether a woman can be a leader. The issue is whether American women think an American woman can be a leader. Well, apparently not. They're abandoning, and that just shows the American female thought process. It's quite pathetic in my view. But it's I what mean, I've been telling people all along, and I'm called a misogynist for saying it, but you see that what I'm saying is true, don't you? I absolutely agree with what you're saying is true, and I read the article this morning, and I thought it was rather funny that uh, the so-called feminists are upset. It's just like, should black people vote for Obama because he's black? Should old geezers vote for John McCain because he's an old geezer? I mean, that's... that's well, I'm sure some will. Oh, I'm sure you're right, definitely. 
And I'm sure that's the majority of John McCain supporters are old geezers, too. Well, by the way, the majority of uh, Hillary Clinton supporters are old geezers as well. I guess, yeah, I guess old geezer women, maybe. That, maybe that's yes, what. women over 65 are big uh, support base. Yeah. But my reason for changing um, my support to Obama, you know, isn't because he's good looking or uh, he sounds like he knows what he's talking about. I mean, um, I think that he has a message that resonates at least with me, whereas Hillary is one of those whichever way the wind blows politicians. And that's why she's not appealing to me. Now, let me ask you the same question I'm asking everybody. And I've asked men and women this question. So what exactly is Barack Obama going to do? By the way, I'm supporting him, too. What's he going to do? Well, first of all, what he can do is inspire a lot of people who haven't been involved in No, no, no. I don't mean inspiring okay. people to, to vote for him. Okay. Now, he's, I mean in terms now of he's president. What's he going to do? Well, I hope there's a long list of things he's going to do. No, no, no. I'm not asking what you hope for. I'm asking what he is going to do. Rock. Bring our soldiers home. That's it. No, that's number one. Number two, hopefully do something about... Well, I'm not talking about, wait, I, I, don't, I want you to understand the question. Okay. I'm not talking about what you hope he's going to do, wish he's going to do, think he ought to do. What he has said that he's going to do is introduce health care reform. He has said that. And I agree his position with Hillary is very And similar. And what exactly is the reform? In terms of establishing a, not a universal health care, but a one-payer system that people could elect to join. Um, but Hillary wants you to everybody to be required to join that. But so anyway, to in, uh, implement and does he ever one. say? And I'm curious because I'm voting for the guy. Yeah. Does he ever see how he's going to pay for it? Well, he hasn't said exactly. Just like any of the other politicians and some other things, he hasn't said exactly. Although his green initiatives, he has said, like Hillary, that he would use tax breaks for oil companies to help fund research and um, eliminating our dependence on foreign oil and those kind of issues. But specifically, um, I think closing loopholes for the, the wealthy, the tax loopholes. Are there any left? Because I, I, I am wealthy. Uh, are there any left? I think there's a lot of left. You well, could you tell me what they are? Because I'd like to call my accountant today and get those going. Well, I agree the stock market hasn't been doing very well. well it's not just that. Uh, what loopholes are left? Oh, there's a lot of loopholes. Can you I mean, name I, one? Because I, I, I don't see them. I, I mean, I, I have a huge tax return every year. I, 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 I after one point one million dollars, you can't deduct your uh, mortgage interest. Uh, you can't deduct your uh, uh, if you pay interest on uh, a car, a boat, a plane. You can't, you can't write that off like you used to be able to. Uh, In California, you don't have to pay taxes on your yachts or your. That's artists. only if you keep them out of the state for a certain number of months. I'm talking about federal now. Okay. And I'm asking you, what are the federal tax loopholes? What are they? Well, not that they're loopholes. I guess the tax base, the tax rate, and wealthy people are not taxed proportionately to more middle income people. That's that's the fact. How so? Even Warren Buffett said his secretary, who makes sixty grand a year, is taxed at a higher base than he is, and he's a billionaire. Well, let me tell you this. Let me say this. I. I, I would be happy to pay higher taxes. Me too. But what you just said is not true. Even though I agree we need to have higher taxes, uh, what you said isn't true. I mean, if the tax rate is 39.6% for wealthy people, 33% for some people, 28% for some people, right? Um, it, it's the only reason it's not proportionate is because rich people pay a higher percentage of what they make uh, than middle class people. Yeah, but a $60,000 income paying 28% versus somebody who's paying 39% on a $100 million income, I mean, figure it out. It but but, but you use the word proportionate, yes. which is uh, typical of people's lack of understanding of, of mathematics and terms involving mathematics. It would be proportionate if everybody paid 39% or if everybody paid 28% or if everybody paid 15%, it would be proportionate. It's not proportionate, that's what I'm saying. But when you say it's not proportionate, the fact is rich people actually pay a higher percentage of their income in taxes True. than poor people true. or middle class people. Of course. So it, you're right, it's not proportionate, money, but it's the opposite of what you're saying. It, it, in other words, rich people pay a higher percentage than middle class people. True. Uh, they pay a higher percentage of their higher income. True. 
So yeah, you you can't say that right now it's not fair to middle class people because poor people and middle class people pay less in taxes than rich people, not just in dollars, in terms of percentage of their income. That is true, but I will say that Warren Buffett did say that his secretary, who makes sixty grand, pays a higher proportion of her income than he does as a billionaire. So I guess I'm basing it on his comment and my limited. Well, yeah, but guess what? Even 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 rich people like me, who are much poorer than Warren Buffett, uh, I don't trade as many stocks as Warren Buffett. And Warren Buffett is like an extreme case. Right, but I mean, he was making an extreme point. And, that I, I, and by the way, you want to you want to raise capital gains taxes? Uh, fantastic, go right ahead and do it. I well, don't. Nobody's making money, so how can you raise on the stock market? So raising capital gains is going. Well, having low, well, that's what I said on the air the other day. Low capital gains taxes don't mean a thing if everybody's losing right. money in the stock market. <laughs> Right. I think, well, first of all, Obama can, I, I think he may, whoever comes in is going to have to raise taxes. Let's face it, Iraq is costing $3 trillion. Um, There's no doubt about it. So, I mean, that's an issue. The other issue is, of course, the environment. I mean, I believe that um, that is a, a Obama issue that I am supporting him for as well. Again, Hillary isn't that much different than the issues. So that's why when I looked at the issues side by side, they are virtually the same on many of their issues. The, boring, the debates are snooze fest because they say the same thing and nothing new comes out. But the bottom line is, I feel that Obama says, here's my stance, this is what I believe in, follow me. Hillary, on the other hand, it, you know, looks at the polls and sees which way the wind is blowing and changes her opinions based on that. And well, that Bill Clinton did that. It was very popular for doing it. I'm sorry? Bill Clinton did the same thing and was very popular. Because let's face it, why shouldn't the president yeah, give the people what they want? But you see, you loved him for doing it, but you hate her. And that. I hate her. You, you loved him, but I you like wouldn't Obama vote for her. Better. If yeah. Obama wasn't there, I would vote for Hillary. All right, Denise, thank you for that. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. And uh, it's Sylvia on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Yes, I'm calling from Santa Ana. Yes. And are you there? No, I left the room. Okay. No, I'm not I am an Obama supporter, but that is not why I'm calling you. I'm calling you because I think you're very ill informed really? about women who have been leaders of countries. For example. A woman called not long ago and said she mentioned Margaret Thatcher, and you didn't give her a chance. You just cut her off, and you said goodbye, and you said Margaret Thatcher is dead. That is true, but Margaret Thatcher changed the direction of England. But that was not what she was talking about. She was talking about people running countries today. I said name okay, women who are well, running countries today. Okay. You name... You name some women. Margaret Thatcher ruling. hasn't run a country in a long time. She's oh, not running wrong. a country today. You're and wrong. England is because being run by a man. Is the chancellor of Germany. She is female. We're not talking it's about Argentina. Germany. We're talking about England. Well, we're not talking about England. We're talking about... No, no. I, by the way, I'm the host of this show. And I set the agenda. And we were talking about England. And you cannot change course after I make my point. You can't then change course. You can't. Uh, I will not allow it. No, but wait. I didn't change course. Yes, you did. Because you tried you were... to say that Margaret Thatcher, uh, I wouldn't let the woman continue. And the fact is, I didn't let her continue because I said, but women currently running countries. And she said, Margaret Thatcher. She was the one who was ill informed because Margaret Thatcher hasn't run England in a long time. Then you said I was wrong because a woman runs Germany. That, that makes absolutely no sense. Margaret Thatcher isn't running England, hasn't been running England for years, and that's that. No, look, we're not talking about women running countries in the past. Uh, please, Grandma, go back to KRLA, okay? Please. Why don't I talk about politics? Because people like that call in. That's why. How did she find this station? I didn't know they had FM on radios in homes like that. How did she, how did she find us? I have no idea. You must go back to KFI where you came from, Grandma, please. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show. Southern California's FM Talk Station. 97.